I'd say um, you might get asked this question sometimes. Um, what, what's the best time of the year for you as a basketball coach? Um, and I'd say right now is about it uh, in the sense that we've been going for about a month, you know, with the uh, eight-hour-a-week schedule. Uh, we've been on the floor for four hours and strength and conditioning for four hours. The guys have been doing a lot of stuff on their own. And today will be the first day of official practice where it used to be the old October 15th start date. Um, but this is the best time of the year for us because right now we're trying to put together what we think we have. What did we see all summer? Uh, what did we learn about the new guys? What did we learn about the returning guys? Um, and now it's time to put it all together. And we got about a month before we actually start playing um, somebody else. The guys are all ready, ready to play against somebody else. Um, but there's still so many things about what we do offensively and defensively that we need to put in um, to get ourselves, you know, obviously ready. Um, looking back, um, I'm proud of last year's team for hanging in through uh, a really grueling, grinding regular season, particularly in the conference season. Um, we lost a lot of close games in the second half of the season in some really tough places. We had a stretch of some really difficult games. Um, our ability to hang in um, and play well on the road uh, as well as winning enough at home was enough of a formula to, to get us in the tournament, um, which just is not a given um, anymore. Um, partly because of how good the league has become, how competitive the league has become top to bottom. Um, the top teams are always going to be the top teams. The challenge with us right now is you look at the teams that are at the bottom of the league right now, and you look at a lot of those programs made coaching changes about a year or two ago. And this is about the time when those programs are going to start to, you know, try to up, come on up. And so it, it's made it, made it really challenging. Um, that said, uh, to get in a tournament, to advance in the tournament, and to have a 10-point lead at halftime against the number two team in the country tells you how close we were. Um, a win over Houston takes a good season and makes it a very good season. Last year was a good season. It wasn't much more than that. Um, a win over Houston, a, an invitation to the Sweet 16, and now you talk about a very good year. Um, we bring enough guys back from uh, th that team um, and enough experience back uh, to build on. And we've got uh, probably as many newcomers this year as I think I've ever had. Um, how many newcomers do we have? I know it's someplace on this list, Marlene. Five, seven? Five. So um, that gives us uh, enough, you know, enough new players to put a little bit of pop um, in the lineup and give us some new things that we can kind of work on with some new personnel, which makes it very, very exciting. Um, over the last six years, uh, arguably, uh, we've had the best program in the SEC. We've won more NCAA tournament games than any program in the SEC over these last six years. Uh, we won three championships in the last six years. Uh, we've obviously put six or seven guys into the NBA. Our goal is to be able to come back next year and say, over the last seven years, we've had the best program uh, in the league. That's going to be challenging because there are some people that are right behind us. And, you know, can we say next year, we've won more NCAA tournament games than anybody in the last, over the last seven years? That's kind of what my goal is. Uh, you know, that obviously, and it could be for championships. So we're excited about getting started. Questions? Yeah, first of all, I, hate, I, I, I like the transfer portal because um, I like kids to be able to have the opportunity. Um, I don't like the transfer portal because I hate losing guys. Um, we try to create uh, an atmosphere of tough love and, and family. 
Um, and so nobody likes to lose parts of their family. It hurts. Um, that said, every time we've lost somebody in the family, we've gotten better. Will that be the case again this year? We'll see, right? Um, and and uh, so, like I, for example, just, just looking at what replacement, you know, Zepp graduated. So happy for you know, Zepp. Zepp was one of the best on-ball defenders and just, a, just a, a real good guy that you could point to and say he sort of represents what Auburn basketball is all about, played hard, didn't take possessions off, you, you know. Denver Jones. Denver Jones, a much better offensive player than Zepp. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's, he, you know, and he, and he works really hard defensively. You know, that could be an upgrade at the position. Um, really excited about Denver. You're going you're gonna to see some, you're going to see him do some things uh, that he didn't do. Years past, Denver has been a shooter. Uh, he's been a guy that would get to the elbow and pull up. Now, I think in part due to the way Coach Damon Davis and our staff are able to really transfer, transform bodies. Um, Obviously, we've been a program that's always been about development. It's been a huge part of, of, of who we are and what we sell and guys getting better. Um, you, the, you, won't rec you wouldn't recognize Denver Jones if you saw him in the spring compared to what he looks like right now. He's put on 15, all muscle, and now he's able to kind of get downhill and get to the rim, which is an element of his game that he didn't have before. Chaney Johnson, same thing. In addition to Chaney just got a haircut, uh, which I walked in the gym, didn't even recognize him. He's put on 15, and he is a tremendously powerful athlete. Who is he replacing? He's replacing Yo, Johan, Treor. Um, we played Chris Moore a little bit at that backup four position behind Jalen Williams. Um, he's old, a, a Division II player who was one of the better Division II players in the country a year ago, now gets a chance to play in the SEC. I think it's a great story. He's in a battle with Jalen Williams for the starting position, and um, right now it's it's really close. It's very close. Jalen had a Jalen had a has had a really good fall. Uh, Cheney had a, has had a great summer and fall, um, but he's big and strong and athletic and powerful and can shoot it, can defend multiple positions. I think we're better at that position again because of of the transfer. Um, Chad Baker, um, it'll be really, really hard to, for anybody at the three to play better than Al played at the end of the year last year. Al played great at the end of last year. I'm so proud of Alan Flanagan for working through some adversity and playing his best basketball at the end of his career here at Auburn um, and graduating. Um, but Chad, Chad can play. Chad's, he's got stuff you can't teach. The good news is he's a six foot eight inch three man. The bad news is he weighs 180 pounds. The good news is he weighed 170 when he got here. Literally, he's picked up 10 pounds, and, um, and that's going to really, really help him. Could we be better at that position? We'll see. That's going to be, a, you know, obviously, you know, going to be a challenge. So, I, I would just pick out those three guys in the tr in the transfer portal that have the best chance to have impact for us. Right away. You mentioned kind of previously about finding that, that first-team scholarship player. What is your process for that going forward, and is there anyone you're kind of looking at that? Say it one more time. You mentioned going forward that you're still kind of going through the process of finding that uh, third-team scholarship player. Now that you have that back, how do you make a decision there, or kind of what is the process there? Yeah, no, I, I, doubt, I doubt we'll use that 13th scholarship uh, I, I, take, I take pride in the fact that it's been a while since we've actually had 13 guys on scholarship. Uh, and part of it is it's hard enough to keep 12 guys happy, let alone 13. It's not just about keeping them happy. It's about your locker room. Plus, it always gives me an opportunity to put a non-scholarship player and walk on a scholarship. Um, but we won't do that till if we do that last scholarship, we'll hold it to mid-semester just in case something – you know, pops up mid semester that then we would have an opportunity. Yeah, 
Man, I'd love to take credit for being part of the plan. Um, you know, in recruiting, we just we try to get the best we can. And yeah, I mean, everything that anybody does offensively works better when you put four or five guys out there that need to be guarded on the perimeter. The floor opens up. Uh, the NBA is flat out almost giving up on basketball players who can't shoot the three ball. Like, literally. When you got a draft last year where Drew Timmy, uh, Sonogo, and Shiway, none of those three kids draft drafted, and they were the three most dominant players in college basketball last year. Don't get drafted. The only thing, the common denominator there would be maybe they're not as athletic or some, or they don't shoot it. Um, um, and yet I actually think all three of those kids will play in the NBA and all three of those kids are going to be really successful in the NBA. Um, but it just sort of tells you how, what a premium, you know, the perimeter shooting is. Um, I thought so far this fall we've shot it better. I don't know if it's because we're not defending it as well. But um, it's something that we definitely need to improve on. Um, and I do think it, it'll be, I think we have the personnel to do it. You know, we, in order to maintain uh, a relevance, uh, Auburn basketball, um, I believe, five out of the last six years um, has been in the top 11 in the country. I say that because it would have been five out of six being in the top 10, but last year I think the closest we got was 11th. I don't think we got in the top 10. When I say that, that might, like, set, surprise you. Really? Have we re in the last six years we've been – Four, four of those years, we got in the top 10 at one point, and last year we got 11th. Um, um, so to maintain some relevance in the world of college basketball, which is the great, still always a great challenge for basketball teams in the SEC or a challenge for Auburn, we've got to play a schedule. So we, we open up with Baylor. That's a made-for-television game that, that, that we know they're going to be a preseason top 20 team. Um, and we're going to find out where we're at right away. Um, but then we have two incredible home games against two Power Five programs in USC and Virginia Tech. You know, Virginia Tech's one of the best coach teams in the ACC. Um, that'll be a hard out. Uh, and then USC, they could come in here. They could come in here in the top ten in the country with a with an with a with an improved roster from a year ago. We went out there and and. Uh, you know, be, had played really well in the first half, didn't play as well in the second half, um, and didn't, did not win the game. Um, so two incredible home games. Um, and then we're going to play Indiana and Notre Dame, um, Indiana and Atlanta, which we hope that can become uh, a home game. But i got to tell our fans, the Hoosiers travel, and there will be a lot of people leaving Bloomington, Bloomington and Indiana to try to get down to Atlanta in December to do a little Christmas shopping. So we need to continue to – have our fans go over to Atlanta and give us a fighting chance against Indiana. They're a top 20 team. Um, and then Notre Dame, uh, uh, Oklahoma State, and uh, St. Bonaventure. So in addition to that, we're playing Huntsville. The game's already sold out, but playing up in Huntsville against, uh, I think it's a UNC Asheville, I believe, really good team. So I got a team that won their league and sort of been the common denominator in the non-conference. So... Um, it's just about trying to stay get, – it's probably about getting ready and staying relevant. I finished the end of that question, Philip. Has it gone the way I anticipated? That's me. I just can't hear anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I said, has it gone the way you anticipated? And how hard was it to get through those early years when you did not have a Great, great job. Um, well, my goal in coming to Auburn was to get the basketball program 
up to the level of excellence that the rest of the sports programs enjoyed and the other, universe, other parts of the university enjoyed. So whatever that, whatever that means. Did I expect to get to a Final Four? You know, probably I'd, I'd not been as a Division One head coach. I hadn't been in the Final Four before. I won a national championship in Division Two. I finished second one year. I went to a few Elite Eights. So I would think that that exceeded my expectations if I had an expectation. Um, you know, I, I uh, the biggest thing about a reflection would be, you know, um, I want to do the best job I possibly can with what I have, what, what, what we have. Um, I'm not into making any excuses. Um, I, I'm very proud of the fact that in our first two years where we were not successful, um, and we weren't successful my first two years, there were moments. Um, getting to the SEC semifinals in year one with a really depleted roster, um, winning three games in Nashville was was as 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 important as anything we accomplished, because it set the tone. Our second year, we weren't very good either, but for the first time in about 18 years, we did beat Kentucky, and we had a few moments. I probably should get a few more that year, and there were a couple. Then in year three, we were really really young and finally able to recruit the kind of folks that could get us where we wanted to get to. We won 18 games, and, and then we kind of we kind of sort of took off from there. So, um, But I'm, as, we, as we sit here now, I started off this press conference going, I want to be able to say that in the last seven years we've had the best program. And in order to do that, we're going to have to have a great year. Well, just like Jabari or Walker or Isaac or some of the great players that we've had in the last few years, um, he's one of our hardest workers. I'd say right now he and Chaney Johnson, um, then maybe Denver. Uh, this, has been the, this has been the hardest working group we've had as far as guys coming in on their own and putting in the work. Uh, everybody stepped up. Aiden's in there every morning without fail. And, um, you know, he's got, he's got some special in him. He can really shoot the ball, and he's got great range. Um, he's a quiet leader. Um, he's not come in. He and Trey have done a phenomenal job working together, um, getting to learn the position, competing against one another, but being unbelievable teammates. Um, we'll be, that's the only position that we're going to be young at. Trey will be in his second year of college, and Aiden will be a freshman. We're going to be young at quarterback. We're going to be young at point guard. Um, but they, they can each play, and they've, got, they've each got their own strengths. And um, Aiden, uh, Aiden has got, uh, like, with the ball in his hands late, the best thing you can do is find a way to. What's the best thing I can do is find a way to get him open, and he'll make a shot. Um, and he just he just wants to get better. He wants to get better. So he's got. Aiden has got some of that. It. He's got some special in him. Yep. Well, you know, so far, I think we've actually gone for, we've gone like five for five in the transfer. If you look at Wendell or KD or Zepp, Walker, that first year we brought four in. And then you had Jabari as the fifth player coming in that year. It's like, you know, and he didn't play like a freshman. Those four transfers were all really good. And then you look at Janai Broom last year. He was the only transfer. And he was second team all conference. He was pretty good. So actually, like I said, that's five for five out of the transfer portal. Not five out of six, not five for five. So 
I, I, feel, I feel really good about the guys that I talked about. AD, uh, who we brought in late, um, we knew was going to be a player that we wanted, to, we wanted to develop. He's a terrific athlete, and he's been really, really good in practice. And I think he's got a really good upside. Will it be hard with Dylan and Janai at his position? Uh, it, it will be. So I, I don't. I have not referred to him as much because I'm not putting as much on him because he's he's worked. Because but but but, he, but he's going to be a good player for us in the future, um, and some depth for right now. We'll see. And my answer is so far what I've seen. Yeah, I, I I I've highlighted those three transfers, and I think those those three transfers will all have an impact. Um, and I think their chemistry has been really, really good with the team so far. The issue on that is we've not had any adversity yet. I've tried to put us through some adverse situations by just being a butthole in practice and trying to get after them a little bit and challenge them and create some adversity. Uh, but we're going to have plenty of adversity created once we start, you know, playing our schedule. So I've been, I've been very pleased with them so far. I think you hit the two things to close it out. I think you hit the two things on the head, you know, defense, rebounding, toughness, physicality. You know, um, for Wendell for his size was tough. Zepp was tough. Al was tough. Um, and losing those three guards, that 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 that's going to be a a, a factor. Um, and so we're we're addressing it in practice. Um, we won't be as good on the ball without Zepp. Al was pretty good on the ball. Um, and so we may, we may not be able to be as disruptive. We may not put as much ball pressure on the ball. Uh, we may switch, maybe switching a little bit more. Um, we're, with the exception of, you know, we're, we're, a little, we're a little bigger at guard, you know, so we may not be as fast and quick, but, you know, we're a little bigger, we're a little older. Um, Will we use that age and experience, and will that will we pick up our physicality, our defense, and our toughness? That's to be determined. If there was one thing I would say uh, we need to improve on, you know, based on what I've seen so far, would be would be would be just that. Okay, all right, guys. Thank you.